Hey, what's up you guys? So Mario's a very interesting guy. He's a man of many professions. He not only has his main staple platforming franchise, but on the side he also has racing games, party games, sports games, he even has an RPG once in a while. However, over the years it feels like there's one profession specifically by Mario that's being really overlooked and kind of forgotten about, and that has to be Dr. Mario. If you were to say that the Dr. Mario franchise was a little stale and repetitive, that would be an understatement. It really does feel like most of these games are exactly the same, but it has a fresh coat of paint, and it's getting to the point where we're not even getting Dr. Mario games anymore. And I find this extremely interesting, because apparently this whole phenomenon of Mario getting spin-off series, this all started with Dr. Mario. That was the first real main breakaway from Mario's platforming adventures. That's when Nintendo started to realize, hey, we can stick this guy in just about anything and we're gonna make money. So I really do find it odd that this whole Mario spin-off universe kind of was birthed out of Dr. Mario, and now he specifically is the one being left behind the most. And so in this video, that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about. What is going on with Dr. Mario? Why was he created in the first place? Exactly when and how did the series become so stagnant and stale? And then of course, I wanna try and add a solution to this whole problem. I wanna talk about what we could possibly do to fix this whole Dr. Mario franchise. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Let's figure out why exactly Dr. Mario was made in the first place. So after doing a bit of research on Dr. Mario, one thing became very clear. This franchise was created solely to combat Tetris. See, back in the days of the NES, Super Mario Bros. was in its heyday, selling a ton of copies, but another game that got released on the NES was Tetris, and this game was also one of the hottest selling games on the console. After Nintendo saw the overwhelming amount of success that Tetris was bringing in, they decided they had to make their own puzzle game to capitalize on the same kind of success. And so the simple concept of Dr. Mario was born. So one thing we can understand about the Dr. Mario franchise already from its birth was there wasn't like a whole lot of ambition going into this franchise, right? This wasn't somebody's passion project. It was just something like, hey, you know, let's make a game similar to this other successful game and let's see how well we can do. And it worked out for them. Apparently Dr. Mario, the first iteration of it on the NES, it did very well. So the very first Dr. Mario game for the NES was created in 1990, and there was a long period of time where this game was getting ported to a couple of different consoles, but every single time it still had the same kind of formula. Nothing really was new or changed or added to this formula for a while, up until 2001, when they made Dr. Mario for the Nintendo 64. This was the next real, like, big step up, the next big innovation for the Dr. Mario franchise, and I have to say, as a fan of the franchise, this game definitely adds a lot. Without a doubt, I feel like most people can agree, Unfortunately, this is where the Dr. Mario franchise would peak. So there's a lot of reasons why Dr. Mario 64 is considered like the best one. It not only has like everything the original game had, so it's like already a really tight puzzle solving game, but they added a lot of quality of life stuff. Now, instead of just doing player versus player, they added like a four player mode so you can get a lot more people in on the action. They added a bunch of different game modes. They had like flash mode, they had an endless mode. And of course the most obvious was the story mode. The story mode, it wasn't anything crazy. It was just like an interesting little distraction, but it was full of cool, unique characters, a lot of stuff to do, different little challenges and it had a decent bit of difficulty to it. I think the reason this game sticks out in a lot of people's mind is because of the story mode. It was very simplistic, but it was just like a lot of the cool, unique backgrounds and environments with the characters that go along with it. It does make it feel like it comes a bit more alive. And this game was absolutely perfect. It took everything the original Dr. Mario game had and it added to it. It had very memorable characters, many stages to pick from, a lot of cool music, new game modes, and to wrap all of this up, it had a really nice art style to go along with it. There really was a lot to love about Dr. Mario 64, and as a fan of the game, I couldn't wait to see what would come after. And unfortunately, I was gonna have to hold my breath, because after that, we pretty much would get nothing new, nothing innovative out of the Dr. Mario franchise. It would just kind of be the same formula over and over again, but with a fresh coat of paint. So let's go over a couple of the different Dr. Mario iterations that were released after Dr. Mario 64. The next game to be released would be Dr. Mario Online RX that was released for the WiiWare. Now yeah, I do remember back in the day I definitely bought this game. This was like the natural next step up, and while I did like this game, I thought it was fun and interesting, and I did like the fresh coat of paint that it had, it was definitely lacking. It was not nearly as good as Dr. Mario 64. It didn't have like any cool creative characters. You couldn't really pick any backgrounds. There was no story mode for sure. And that was probably like the beginning of what started to make this franchise stagnate. They didn't really add or try and build on anything they did after Dr. Mario 64, they just kept re-releasing the formula with like a new fresh package. And nothing, you know, represented that greater than the next game that would get released, and that was Dr. Mario Express, released for the DSiWare. You know, it's more or less just the same, you're just playing the old Dr. Mario formula, but like, you know, now it's done in this kind of style for the DSi. It's gonna be like, maybe a new art style, a couple of things different here and there, but it's largely the same. No characters, no story mode, no original, like, uh, cool roster of people to pick from, there's no, you know, interchangeable backgrounds. The most you're gonna get is you could probably change the music, and like, that's it. So, it's safe to say, like, after Dr. Mario 64, this whole franchise just really stagnated heavy, but 
now is when things might have started to look pretty good. We got Dr. Luigi. So this Dr. Luigi game was released on the Wii U and it was looking pretty promising. It looked like it was getting a decent bit of effort put into it, all the viruses got a redesign, and the intro screen looked really polished. I was excited to see what this game had to offer, and unfortunately it was just the same old rinse, wash, and repeat Dr. Mario formula, but it was centered around Luigi this time. At the end of the day, the virus redesign didn't amount to much, and the whole new thing that they added with this game was Luigi throwing literal L's. I don't know how fun that is, it really doesn't look that fun. It's not a reason enough for me to want to buy this game, I, I don't feel too bad that I missed out on it. So after that, the Dr. Mario franchise was pretty down bad, it really didn't have much going for it. After Dr. Mario 64, it just stagnated real bad. However, to my surprise, the next entry in the franchise started to turn it around a bit, and I'm a little disappointed I never played this one. And that was Dr. Mario Miracle Cure for the 3DS. Now this game was pretty much doing everything I was complaining about. It was adding something new, and it was making things fun. So from what I could see, I never got to play this game, but there were a bunch of different missions so you would actually switch back and forth between Mario and Luigi so already that's a bit of variety that's pretty cool. They actually brought back the gameplay of Luigi throwing L's from the Wii U game so that's actually pretty cool. But on top of that they added a feature where Mario is now using items. And this changes a lot it's not just like how you combat the viruses but they completely redesigned like how they're lined up too. Like this game, this game right here, it did everything right. This just looks like the same Dr. Mario formula but it looks completely redesigned, completely fun. It's something this franchise has been needing for a while. On top of that the art style of the game had going for it wasn't too bad this was a pretty cool looking game and it even had some online battle features that was pretty impressive i would say the only thing that this game like fell short of was just having a small roster of characters and some sort of throwaway story mode if it just added those two things this would have been better than dr mario 64 and this would have been the new standard but even then without those two things this game was still really solid and honestly i'm disappointed i never got around to playing it i don't even know what it existed i feel like i would have got a lot out of this and now this is the confusing part after Dr. Mario Miracle Cure for the 3DS, it feels like this franchise was like, it was doing something cool, doing something creative, and it was getting its uh, footing right. And now, like, the stage was set for them to drop a really cool Dr. Mario game for the Switch, and to this day, it hasn't happened, and I'm fully convinced it's never gonna happen. We never got, like, the next big game in the Dr. Mario franchise. That's just pretty much where this started to die out. The only game we would get after Dr. Mario Miracle Cure would be, like, the app game, but I'm not even sure if we could count that at this point, because they, they deleted the game. You can't even get that anymore. I tried to play it, and I couldn't, so that's just, like, completely gone. I'm honestly not counting that at this point. Now, before we do a wrap-up, we need to do a recap of everything we were just discussing, because I think we're going to find a lot of the answers that we're looking for in the recap. So... You know, why is Dr. Mario like this? So, the reason Dr. Mario was created in the first place, we already established, it was created just to combat Tetris, right? So, already going into it, this wasn't a big creative franchise with a lot of ambition. It was pretty much just a one-and-done deal, we made the puzzle game, and then they just kept redoing it time and time again. Exactly when and why did the series start to stagnate, we figured that out too. It was pretty much after Dr. Mario 64, and it was because they weren't really adding anything new or creative to the franchise, they were just redoing it over and over again, but they weren't even doing it as good as Dr. Mario 64. So I feel like the main reason they're giving up on Dr. Mario as a franchise, Nintendo just feels like there's nothing left they can do with it, right? They did as much as they could, they added the characters, they added items, and that's pretty much it. They're just tired of redoing the same puzzle game over and over again. And this is what I don't understand, they pretty much mastered the whole formula. They just had to redo what they did with Miracle Cure on the Switch. I fully believe if they made a Dr. Mario for the Switch, it would have sold pretty good, and all they had to do was this. Make it the same formula, just add items, add a couple of new items, have a small roster of characters to pick from, some throwaway story mode, a couple of other one-off game modes, and then just some sort of online battle. That's all they really needed to do, and they could have charged $50 for that, and I would have been satisfied. And I think most other people would have too. And that's sad, and like, this is the solution I'm willing to offer, because I understand at this point gaming is becoming expensive, all these companies, they're really hesitant on making new games, because you just don't know if you're going to get your investment back, I get that. But one thing I feel like would be a really good idea for the Dr. Mario franchise, it'd be a really good fit, is if they did some sort of collaboration with the Luigi's Mansion franchise. For whatever reason, like Dr. Mario and the viruses, mixing with like EGAD and the whole ghost thing, I feel like that'd be a really cool collab, and I feel like the gameplay variety would be insane there. I don't know. Definitely let me know what you guys think. Is Dr. Mario as a franchise, like, redeemable? Was what I said a good idea? Would you have played a Dr. Mario game for the Switch? Or at this point, is this just like some old dusty boomer franchise that needs to be killed off? One thing I'm not willing to accept is that, uh, there's nothing you can do with this franchise. You could definitely do some sort of 3D thing with Dr. Mario. That's easy. I'm not gonna go on a whole tangent, but there's a lot you could do with this franchise. Or you could just simply add a couple of new items and game modes. That would be enough. There's a lot you could do with Dr. Mario. But again, it's all on if Nintendo decides to gamble on that. Like always, you guys, thank you so much for watching my video. I always appreciate that. I'm always working on new stuff, so make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and uh, I'll just see you in the next video. See ya.